Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In today's lecture, I will discuss about the laws of the production. In the previous video, I have discussed the basics of production and production function. So, what is law of production? Law of production gives us the relationship between the input and the outputs. Okay, so how much of the input that is the factors of production that we have utilized and what is the total output that relationship technical relationship is uh, given by the law of production now law of production can be studied under two condition on the basis of the timeline one is short run and another is long run so today we will discuss the law of production in the short run period so when there is a short run time period uh, how the input and output relationship will come into the play so what happens in the short run as we know the major characteristic of the short run period is that the supply of the factors of production cannot be elastic that means that all of the factors of production cannot be changed in the short run period means if you want to add the factor of production you want to increase the factors of production in the short run period it may not be possible because its supply is not elastic so you will not have you will not be there will not be much uh, of the factors of production available similarly it is also difficult to uh, shift it down or decrease it so in the short run it is considered uh, that uh, it's the factors of production cannot be changed so when we look at it we found that there might be one or two factor of production that can be changed but all of the factors of production cannot be changed so that is um, where the we will have the different kind of law of production in the short run period but while in case of the long run period what happens that it is considered that supply of all of the factors of production all of the factors of production is elastic and is changeable so in the long run you can change the whole scale of production okay you can change the technology you can change the labor you can change everything so in the long run the production factors of production can be changed since we are going to discuss the short run production function in this video so let us go through these things one by one so when i say that in the short run only one uh, or few factors of production can be changed so in the theory we assume it to be labor labor as a variable factor means labor is one of the factors of production that is elastic even in the short run means it can be changed while other factors such as land is fixed and i have already discussed that for the sake of um, ease uh, the economists have taken only these two factors of production land and labor for the production function for the empirical production function so we basically discuss only these two factors of production we basically have four factors of production but we use only these two land and labor uh, or uh, you can say labor and cap uh, capital uh, for the uh, sake of discussing these theories so in short run production function among these two labor is the one which is variable and land is the one which is fixed factor it means it is not it cannot be changed while labor uh, uh, as a production function can be changed so the quantity of labor can be added on so the production function for the short run comes out to be q is the function of l where l is labor why q uh, why output is a function of labor because this is the factor that can be changed it is the variable factor so whatever change is there in the units of labor it will have some kind of effect on the total output 
quantity generated and this is how we get the relationship between these two input output and input so this is the production function for short run period which will give us the technological relationship between the input and the output now it is also called as the production function with one variable why because we assume that only one factor is variable and other factors are uh, fixed okay so the sh uh, short run production function or uh, we is also known as with the name of the law of variable proportions or the law of diminishing returns now we will get to know why it is called the law of variable proportion or the law of diminishing return law of variable proportion what does it mean it simply means when there is a change in the input when we are changing the factors of production variable factors of production then it will definitely is going to have a positive effect on the output the output will also in uh, change but when we will study this law we will find out that uh, according to the law of variable proportion what happens that the total output definitely keeps uh, keeps on uh, increasing with the increase in the input but after certain point we find that the result on the increase in the output becomes smaller and smaller that it starts to diminish that is why it is also called the law of diminishing return or the law of variable proportions because we will see it with the help of the uh, schedule that with each and every additional increase in the input the effect on the total product average product and marginal pro product the proportions are changing so that is why is also called the law of variable proportions now the assumptions assumptions are always very important in case of economics so what is the first assumption of this law of propo variable proportion it is that the production technology remains changed unchanged as we have already said that only one factor of production is considered variable so of course everything else will be fixed technology is also one of the factor of production and it has to remain fixed the variable factors are homogeneous means all the inputs that we are using they are identical and they are basically giving same amount of uh, they are uh, replaceable and substitute of each other any one factor is constant means uh, i have said that the other fixed uh, other factors of production will be fixed and the fixed factors remains constant so this is the last one which is quite a tricky one you may say that fixed it is fixed or it is constant but if yes, the fixed factors remains constant means again we are saying the same thing stressing the same thing that there is no change in the fixed factors now how do we explain the law of variable proportion in a much better way we can do we can explain it with the help of this schedule okay this is the production you can see the production function schedule here we have four uh, to five columns the first column gives us the units of land which you can see is constant 11111 means there is no change in this factor of production this is the fixed factor of production this one is the fixed one other factor of production which we have is labor we know in the short run only one vary factor of production can be changed and this is called the variable factor of production and here we assume labor to be variable and in the real life also it has been found that labor is one of the factors of production that can be actually changed in the short run period you can have more of the labor to a certain extent even in the short run period so the effect of increase in the labor on the total product and then marginal and average product will help us to understand the law of variable proportions so what is happening here is we are increasing the units of the labor from 1 to 2 2 to 3 4 5 6 we have taken it very constant means the change in the units of labor is constant means there is 
only one unit change at every stage and we will see how it impacts the total product. Total product in terms of unit is 2, 5, 9, 12, 14, 15, 15 and then 14. So if we look at this column only, we will see that it is increasing, then it becomes constant and then it has started to fall. However, we will look, we will see that the input is still increasing, but here the output has started to fall. Now I'll come back to it later. Now look at the marginal product. Marginal product we know that change in the total product at every level. Okay, so marginal product of course at first at this level is 2, this level it is 3 that is 5 minus 2, 3 then 4, 3, 2. So this is actually the outcome of the total product right. But if you look at the uh, trajectory we will find that marginal product is increasing. It in, has increased and then it has reached a point which is 3 and from there it has started to fall. So we can say this is its maximum. Then it has started to fall and it has reached 0 and then negative as well. While average product is we know that the, the average product we know that the total product divided by the number of units. So it is 2 at this level then it is also increasing then it becomes constant and add. then it starts to fall. So all of these things the tra trajectory we can define or we can categorize into three categories or three stages that we call these stages of production. Stage 1 here is this, stage 2 is this and this one indicate third stage. Now how do we categorize it? Simply look at the tables again. When the total product is increasing, here the total product is increasing and the rate of increase is also increasing we can say it's not diminishing from 2 it has more than doubled from 5 it has more it has increased to 9 and from 9 to 12 so it is increasing and increases also um, we can say up to here it is fine marginal products start to increase and then it has reached a point where it becomes constant with the average product and average product also increased and then it becomes constant with itself okay so this was the stage when all of the three total product marginal product and average product all of these three were increasing and this is why it we call the increasing returns the stage of increasing returns why because all the productivity measures are increasing at this stage here you can look at the diagram and you will see the total product this line highest one is total product it is increasing average product is increasing then it becomes constant it is increasing till here and marginal product also sorry marginal product is this one increasing and average product is this increasing and they, bo they both become uh, equal with each other and this is the first stage which is called the stage of increasing return. What happens in the second stage we can see that total product which was still increasing but the rate of increase is almost minuscule or it is diminishing you can say. Then marginal product has already started to fall and so is the case with average product. So basically marginal product and average product starts to decline. Total product was still increasing but the rate of increase is constant or very marginal you can say. That is why it is showing a negative impact on MP and AP because MP and AP is derived from the total product. Then total product starts to increase at a minuscule rate or diminishing rate. It is directly showing its effect on marginal product and average product and they both starts to decline. And what happens? The, this stage ends where marginal product reaches zero. Simply it reaches zero. So we can see that all of the three uh, things, all of the three productivity measures of productivity, TP, MP and AP, they are decreasing at this stage and that is why stage 2 is known as decreasing return. 
and when then we have a stage 3 in which we can see that total product has actually started to decline from till up to this point it, it has become constant but at this point it has actually declined for the very first time from 15 to 14 and it will take down MP and AP furthermore with itself and that is why marginal product becomes negative of course it has to become negative because the total product has declined so marginal product will be negative means there is no additional increment in the productivity due to the increase in the input so this is the point where you have you have still increased your input or factor of production by one more unit which has not given you any incremental productivity or production in fact your production has gone down i mean production total product will still be there but it is going down so that is why marginal product this is very important uh, uh, measure of productivity which tells you that there is no more gain in adding the units of uh, factor of production because you are only incurring more cost and hence we see that average product is still in decrease and because marginal product is in negative that is why this stage is called negative returns as we can see here in the table that marginal product has moved below the line of origin. Okay, so we can once again to put it simply the three stages of production in short run production one is called the stage of increasing return. This is called increasing return. This stage is called the stage of decreasing return and this one is called the negative return. Why? Because I have already explained all of these things in the previous uh, slide. 